So, it's been a couple of weeks since Chapter 5 of Boruto's Two Blue Vortex came out. And while I've covered pretty much everything that we could possibly cover as it pertains to this chapter, there is one thing that we haven't really touched on. And that's mostly because Chapter 5 was an incredibly stacked chapter, and this thing that we haven't touched on is more of a minor plot point. I mean, in this chapter, we got to see things like Sasuke's demise, the return of Boruto to Konoha, the reveal of the Moegi tree just in time for Christmas, and so much more. But one of the more underrated moments in Chapter Chapter 5 of Two Blue Vortex was Amado revealing to us that he's aware that his memories have been altered, but he's not exactly sure how. See, because in Chapter 5, Amado's having a conversation with Sumire, where he reveals that he thinks that he basically raised Boruto, and him, Kashin Koji, and Boruto are responsible for killing Ishiki. That is to say that Amado revealed to us that he believes that Boruto is Kawaki. However, since he believes that Boruto is Kawaki, he also believes that he gave Boruto his karma marking after Ishiki's death, and thus he reveals that he believes that the karma marking that Boruto Boruto has is the one that holds his daughter's memories. However, even though he thinks he's the reason that Boruto has a karma marking, he acknowledges the fact that Kawaki has an altered karma marking that could only be created by him. However, the problem is he doesn't remember giving it to Kawaki, and thus he's come to the conclusion that his memories have been altered, but he's not entirely sure by who or why, or even really how. And while that's crazy and might be a really good thing for Team Boruto, but honestly, who knows if it's a good thing for Team Boruto because who knows where Amado's allegiances lie. The crazier thing to come out of this revelation is the fact that Shikamaru was watching Amado have this revelation. And sure, while Amado might've been feeling this way for a while, he had never said it out loud. But fortunately, because Sumire was asking him leading questions, Amado was talking about how he thought his memories were altered out loud. And fortunately, because Shikamaru and Sai are a cautious bunch, they bugged Amado's laboratory. So Amado Amado is having this revelation, Sai and Shikamaru are watching him have it. See, because while obviously Amado realizing that his memories have been altered is a good thing for the possibility of Amado switching to Boruto's side, Amado doesn't have that much sway within Konoha. I mean, he's working in a monitored lab. Obviously, he's not Konoha's number one guy. Mind you, Konoha doesn't have bugs in Orochimaru's lab, and they're making copies of themselves. And sure, while Amado at one point or another was involved with Kara, Orochimaru at one point or another was killing children for science. And so it's kind of crazy to realize that Amado is lower on the rung than Orochimaru, a literal war criminal. But they were raised in Konoha, so I guess they're cool now. And therefore, Amado being the one person on Boruto's side is a pretty big advantage when you consider the fact of how intelligent Amado is, but really doesn't boil down to all that much politically. However, if Amado, realizing that his memories is altered, is enough to convince Shikamaru that his have been altered, then that's an entirely different story. See, because Shikamaru is the eighth Hokage. And therefore, if Shikamaru comes to the conclusion that his memories have been altered, and therefore his conclusion of believing that Boruto was the murderer of Naruto may not be entirely accurate, and Boruto may be received back into Konoha with semi-open arms. Amado level semi-open arms. However, Amado realizing his memories have been altered might actually mean a lot more than just Boruto coming back to the village. See, because Amado realizing that his memories have been altered shows us that if you have a high enough level of intelligence, you should be able to figure out the differences between your objective reality and your remembered reality, as Amado was able to do. And since the only person in the entirety of Konoha who could be considered on par in intelligence with Amado is the 8th Hokage, there might be a semi-fair argument to make that Shikamaru also has suspicions that his memories have been altered. And there might actually be hard evidence to prove that. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, because today we're talking, Shikamaru knows his memories have been altered. Before we get to breaking down the intelligence of the 8th Hokage, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like the idea of me doing breakdowns of your favorite anime, go ahead and follow my other channel, The Weep Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Boruto, I talk all other anime and manga. Or if you just like the idea of me talking about anime and manga, go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Stalkers Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime and manga this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Or if you want to look like somebody who keeps up with all things anime and manga, go ahead and meander into my merch store, TalkersAnonymous.net, where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. But before we get into all that, today we got to talk about one of our favorite recurring sponsors to the page, Factor. Because this holiday season, you can cross meal prepping off your list of things to do. Skip the meal planning, shopping, grocery shopping, and even cooking with Factor this holiday season. As you can get Factor's fresh, dietitian approved never frozen meals delivered to your door every single week. And all you got to do? Heat them up for two minutes. I think you can pull that off. Treat yourself to high quality, delicious meals this holiday season and never worry about having to eat the same thing week after week ever again. As Factor allows you to choose from 35 plus options every single week. These are chef crafted meals that support a healthy lifestyle that do the most important thing 
Meet your preferences. Whether it's calorie smart, vegan, protein plus, Factor has got you covered. I know Factor helps me more than any other sponsor I run on this page. Because when I film two videos in one day, I don't have time to cook myself an elaborate lunch. So Factor allows me to pop downstairs, heat up a dietitian approved and delicious meal in just two minutes, and they get right back to filming for you. But it's actually lunchtime right now, so let me go ahead and show you just how much I love these meals. Today we're gonna be eating the green chile chicken. And you know the deal here. All we have to do is remove that, poke a couple holes in here, throw it in the microwave, hit that little two button, and I'll see you in a minute. I lied, it was two minutes. That's kind of the point. But let's take a bite and show you just how delicious this is. Mmm. I don't know how they do it, but that chicken is perfectly tender. I just microwaved it for two minutes, and yet, it's like I just cooked it myself. So what are you guys waiting for? Head to factor75.com or click the link in my description and use code NCHammer2350 at checkout to get 50% off your order today. That's factor75.com or use the link in my description and enter code NCHammer2350 at checkout to get 50% off your first order of Factor today. Santa can't be the only one eating good this holiday season. So, has Shikamaru lost his fastball? That's a question that a lot of people have been asking for almost the entirety of Boruto. Because while Shikamaru seemed like an incredibly pragmatic and logical Hokage's aid, he hasn't necessarily had a lot of moments to flex his hyper-intelligence, which has always felt odd when you consider the fact that the entirety of Shikamaru's time in Naruto is spent on the fact that he's so crazy intelligent. In fact, after the death of his father Shikaku in the fourth great shinobi world war, Shikamaru takes over as the brain of the shinobi alliance, showing everybody that outside of his father, Shikamaru was the most intelligent person in all of the five villages, which is a pretty high compliment if you ask me, and really the accolades don't stop rolling there. Because while well, obviously Shikamaru became the Hokage's aide to Kakashi after Kakashi ascended Hokage, after the conclusion of the Fourth Great Shinobi World's War when the Shinobi Union was founded, Shikamaru was elected to be the head of it, effectively making him the head of the UN in the Naruto world, that is. And we've seen over the course of a couple of light novels that Shikamaru has gotten post Fourth Great Shinobi World War that when it comes down to intelligence, Shikamaru definitely still has it. However, unfortunately, when it comes down to strength, he really doesn't. As post Fourth Great Shinobi World War, Shikamaru is, and I kid you not, not even tree level. And thus, when Shikamaru was elected as the 8th Hokage of Konoha, a lot of people, myself included, thought he may not be exactly deserving. Because for a long time in Konoha, the strongest person in the village has been elected Hokage. And Shikamaru was definitely not that, but maybe he made up for his lack in strength with intelligence. And really when it comes down to being a tactical thinker and a politician, Shikamaru rises above everybody else. But the seat of Hokage has never been for the best politician. However, when you consider the fact that Sakura was now the wife of a rogue shinobi, Kakashi told Sasuke years ago that if he ever went rogue again, Kakashi would hunt him down, and Tsunade is now like in her 80s, there wasn't a lot of good choices is outside of Shikamaru to be the 8th Hokage. Maybe, just maybe, after his election of 8th Hokage, we're finally gonna get to see, once again, the true master intellect of Shikamaru. However, unfortunately, that really hasn't been the case. See, because every possible indicator has shown us that Shikamaru is just as affected by omnipotence as anybody else. And I believe chapter one of Two Blue Vortex, we see that Sarada is arguing with Shikamaru about Boruto's innocence. And Shikamaru vehemently denies the concept that Boruto may be innocent, even though Sarada is demanding that he is. On top of this, after Boruto returns to Konoha to battle against Code, we see that Shikamaru is talking with Kawaki, trying to ascertain as to why Boruto and Code showed up simultaneously. And while the initial idea might have been that Boruto and Code are working together, Boruto is very clearly an enemy of Code. But that was perplexing to Shikamaru, thus once again indicating that Shikamaru Shikamaru's memories are just as scrambled as everybody else's. However, it wasn't always this way. Shikamaru wasn't always completely convinced that his memories were correct. In fact, when Omnipotence was first fired off in, I believe, Chapter 79, Shikamaru was one of two peoples to openly express doubt over their memories, and those two people were Shikamaru and Sasuke. While everybody else affected by Omnipotence seemed to immediately believe these new memories were the right ones. However, unfortunately for Shikamaru, he didn't have somebody nearby who was unaffected to tell him that his memories had been changed like how Sasuke had Sarada, and thus because of how Omnipotence works, well in the beginning there was a fair chance to convince Shikamaru that his memories had been altered, as time passed, those new memories became more concrete. And this kind of makes sense, our exact memory of past events gets hazier and hazier the further away we get from those events. And thus since Shikamaru has nobody near him to try and alter his memories back to the originals, his new altered memories have become more and more concrete in his brain, making his new reality seem all but undeniable. Unless of course, that's not the case. Because of the recent events of Chapter 5, it appears to me that that doubt shown three years ago 
hasn't disappeared. Shishikamaru has now seen that the only person in the village who is admittedly smarter than him has a good, undeniable reason to believe that his memories have been altered. And knowing Shikamaru, who's an incredibly pragmatic and logical thinker, who probably believes that Amado has no idea he's being watched and therefore has no reason to lie, has no reason to doubt Amado's good, undeniable reason for believing that his memories have been altered. And here's the thing. Ever since Amado made the realization that his memories have been altered, I've been a little bit upset. It's see because of Amado is able to come to the conclusion that his memories have been altered, why would Shikamaru, the only other person on par with Amado's intelligence, not be able to come to the same conclusion? For hundreds of chapters, Shikamaru's intelligence was hailed as second to none, with an IQ over 200. And therefore, to see somebody else pull off a feat of intelligence that Shikamaru himself wasn't able to pull off, doesn't sit right with me, which is why when a lot of people read this scene, they went, oh, Shikamaru has lost a step, but I don't think he has. See, regardless of whether or not Shikamaru believes in his new memories or his old memories, and that is to say that regardless of whether or not Shikamaru thinks Boruto is Kawaki or Kawaki is Boruto or that they're both their original people, Shikamaru knew for a fact that Amado recreated a karma marking for one of them, and that that karma marking contained Ishiki's powers and chakra, but not his soul. Now, if his memories had been altered, we know that Boruto would be the one holding Ishiki's karma marking, and we know that Shikamaru could know this because really all that was altered was Boruto and Kawaki's position in life. But that wouldn't change the fact that the wielder of the new Ishiki karma marking killed the other karma mark wielder. I'm sorry, killed. Because in the original non-alter timeline, Kawaki kills Boruto with the power of his newfound karma marking. And thus, even if hypothetically Kawaki and Boruto's positions were reversed, Shikamaru would still believe that Boruto, through the power of Ishiki's karma marking, killed Kawaki. And he would be privy to all of this because Naruto saw it all happen. It happened weeks before Kawaki decided to abduct Naruto. And thus, regardless of who Shikamaru believed was in what position, he would know that Amado recreated a karma marking for one of them. And ultimately, if Shikamaru does believe, and he probably does believe, that Ishiki's karma marking is on board, Boruto, it would stand to reason that Shikamaru would come to the conclusion that Ishiki's karma marking was used in the killing of Naruto and Hinata. Because how else would Boruto, without the power of Ishiki's karma marking, be able to kill Naruto and Hinata? And therefore, since Amado was the one to bestow this power upon Boruto, he would be culpable in the death of Naruto and Hinata. Now, that alone would constitute bugging his laboratory, if he wasn't already being monitored in the first place, which he probably was, since Shikamaru has never trusted him. And thus, over the course of these last three years, Shikamaru decided to heavily monitor Amado, as he knew that Amado was the only person to have a deep biological understanding of both Kawaki and Boruto. But Nick, why would he do this? Well, let's say hypothetically Shikamaru was never able to shake the feeling that his memory had been altered. And when Shikamaru felt as though his memories had been altered, he was doubtful of the fact that Boruto killed Naruto and Hinata. What if he ran with that feeling? Coming to the conclusion that Amado, the person who supposedly bestowed Boruto with his newfound powers, would be the person who would be able to identify whether or not Boruto was capable of killing Naruto or Hinata. Tie that into the fact that over the course of these three years of the time skip, Shikamaru and Sarada have been in screaming matches over Boruto's innocence. It would make sense that Shik Shikamaru over the course of these couple of years would start to piece together that possibly his memories have been altered. Because why would Sarada, somebody so close to Boruto, be so vehement about his innocence? Especially when you consider the fact that technically if Shikamaru's memories had been altered, that Sarada should technically be closer to Kwaki than Boruto. However, what wouldn't be altered in these altered memories is how much Sarada loved Naruto, the seventh Hokage. And therefore, why would Sarada stick up so vehemently for an outsider who murdered her idol? It just doesn't make sense, especially to somebody as intelligent as Shikamaru. And thus, Shikamaru, in order order to try and corroborate these doubts, decided to monitor Amado, the only person who would be able to prove these doubts closely. And I believe Shikamaru having these doubts is corroborated by one rather glaring point, and that is that Shikamaru's face has still not been added to the collection of Hokage stone faces. And we know this because in chapter 5, when Sarada and Sumire are looking out over Konoha, we see in the distance the seven stone faces. But seven isn't a high enough number. Those stone faces should be at eight. However, Shikamaru's head was nowhere to be found. And while one could absolutely make the argument that the reason that Shikamaru's face hasn't been added to the stone faces is because in Chapter 1, or Episode 1, when we cut to Boruto and Kawaki's legendary fight over a destroyed Konoha, they're standing on the stone faces, and amongst the stone faces, there is no Shikamaru face, which would make sense when you consider the fact that when drawing Chapter 1, they probably didn't know that Shikamaru was going to be the 8th Hokage, and therefore, from a point of continuity, they can't just draw Shikamaru's face now, because if they added it, then they have to add it in that fight, and that just doesn't make sense. And therefore, Shikamaru's face will never be added to the stone faces, because it would contradict what we've already seen in the story. Except that 
is an incredibly weak argument. Like, yes, obviously, when Boruto and Kawaki are having their chapter one fight, we don't see Shikamaru's face. But that doesn't have to mean that Shikamaru's face was never added. The entirety of Konoha is destroyed. In fact, most of the stone faces that they're standing on are destroyed. Do you know how incredibly easy it would be at the beginning of Boruto and Kawaki's fight to simply have them destroy Shikamaru's face first? It's not like they're standing over a pristine Konoha. And it's not like neither of them have the ability to wipe a stone face off a wall. They've clearly already done it a couple of times. You could even have Shikamaru make a joke about how his face was the first one to be destroyed. And yet, three years into being Hokage, Shikamaru's face has yet to be added. And like we already said at the beginning of this video, really when it came down to it, Shikamaru was the only logical answer left in Konoha to become the eighth Hokage. Konohamaru too young, Sakura now the wife of a rogue shinobi, Kakashi outside of the village, Tsunade too old. And it's not like they thought that Naruto went missing. Everybody on earth thinks Naruto is dead. So the election of a new Hokage would happen rather quickly. You can't make the argument that, oh, we probably was an Hokage for the whole time. Because objectively, he probably was. So why haven't they added his stone face yet? Well, it's relatively simple. Because he doesn't want them to. Because Shikamaru thinks he knows something. That Shikamaru has a lingering feeling in the back of his head that possibly Naruto is still alive. And that therefore, since Naruto is still alive, his seat as the 8th Hokage is merely a temporary one. That instead of ruling over Konoha for the rest of his life, he's merely keeping the seat warm so that Naruto can return to it after he comes back from wherever he is. And therefore, over the course of these last three years, instead of trying to do things like carve his face into the stone wall, he's been trying to confirm the lingering suspicion he's had that Naruto may still be out there. And it's now been revealed that Amado is the way that he's going Going to confirm that suspicion. And here's the thing, the idea that Shikamaru or anybody in Konoha would be able to deduce that Naruto is still alive is not crazy. When Naruto is abducted by Momoshiki in either the beginning of Boruto or the Boruto movie, Sasuke is able to sense Naruto's chakra in whatever dimension Momoshiki dragged him to, which is why Sasuke is able to open a space-time ninjutsu portal that allows him and all the other Kage to get to Naruto's location. And it's also why Sasuke knows that Naruto is still alive. So apparently, high-level sensors have the ability to track chakra signatures from across dimensions, which would make sense because almost the entirety of Sasuke's job as the Shadow Hokage was to track Otsutsuki chakra signatures through dimensions. Now one could pretty easily make the argument that there's not another sensor type ninja as good as Sasuke left in Konoha, but that's not necessarily true. The entirety of the Yamanaka clan known for their sensor abilities are within Konoha. Mino is such an incredible sensor that she runs the entire sensory unit. On top of this, there's several sages left within Konoha's confines, as both Kabuto and Orochimaru have sage-like abilities that massively boost their sensory abilities. Not to mention the fact that Naruto's scientific ninja arm that has the ability to absorb jutsu might be trackable. Doubly so when you consider the fact that it's made out of Hashirama cells. And thus, it's not crazy to assume that somehow, someway, someone in Konoha has been able to track Naruto's non-gone chakra signature, which would confirm to Shikamaru that his seat as the 8th Okage is a temporary one. And I don't want anybody to use the possible argument that, oh, three years isn't long enough to get his stone face put up. That's how long Minato was Okage, and they just got out of a war when he got elected. Konoha, relatively for the past three years, has been in a peacetime. And like, sure, they just lost their Hokage and his wife and codes running around somewhere, but that's really all that's going on. They have the time and the resources to put Shikamaru's face on the stone wall, which means that the only reason it wouldn't have happened is if he forbade it. But why are we talking about any of this in the first place? Well, because the downstream repercussions of Shikamaru realizing that his memories have been altered is going to be massive. Because if we learned anything from chapter five of Two Blue Vortex, it's that Boruto is back in Konoha, and he doesn't appear to be hiding as he revealed himself to both Sarada and Sumire. However, if Boruto was still enemy number one in Konoha, returning wouldn't be a great idea, especially when you consider the fact that he hasn't returned for the last three years. And thus, there's a possibility that if now that Shikamaru understands that his memories have been altered and therefore Boruto may not be as guilty as he once thought, he will allow Boruto to return to the village. And Shikamaru will possibly grant Boruto an audience so that Boruto can tell Shikamaru his objective truth. And therefore, in the coming chapters, we may see Boruto return to the fold of Konoha in a tentative Amado-like relationship, all because Amado and Sumire decided to have a little conversation. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that Shikamaru was intelligent enough to believe that his memories might have been altered? Tell me in the comments below. And while it goes down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, hit that noty bell. Listen, I've said this for a long time and I stand by it. I believe that Shikamaru's intelligence is more tactical than practical. I think he's good on battlefields. I think he's good at figuring out how to win in a fight, but when it comes down to everyday intelligence, he's never really blown me out of the water. But am I weird for thinking that?